What we're going to be talking about today are the assumptions of the kinetic theory of gases. Now this is one of the most interesting areas of physics, particularly because it explains large-scale phenomena such as pressure or temperature resulting from the behavior of really small microscopic objects such as particles such as molecules and atoms. Now there are some assumptions that we we'll need to remember for the exam. So let's have a look at them. Number one, the large, there are large number of particles in random motion. So let's imagine that we have an ideal gas over here on the right. Should we just say that this over here is an ideal gas? If we're, to, if we're able to zoom into it so we can see those particles, if we imagine that they're little spheres, we're going to notice that they're in a random motion. In other words, their velocities are completely random, they have different sizes, uh, they have different directions in particular, and there's no preferred direction of motion. Now, the second assumption <clears throat> now, the second assumption of the kinetic theory of gases is that all collisions are perfectly elastic. Now, if you remember, perfectly elastic from mechanics means that there's no loss of kinetic energy. So, shall we just write that over here? There's no loss of kinetic energy. So, that means that the energy, oops, the energy of those individual particles, their kinetic energy remains unchanged during collisions. Now additionally, the time of collisions is negligible compared to the time between collisions. That means that the particles move a considerable distance, considerably more, before they encounter another particle. Our third assumption is that the volume of the particles is negligible compared to the volume of the gas. So if we have a look at one of our particles over here, its volume is negligible compared to the volume of this whole container. So that means that those particles are incredibly small. And our final assumption that we're going to be looking at today, number four, is that there are no forces between the particles except during collision. This is really significant because normally there is an attractive electrical force between the particles in many substances that is keeping the structure together. In the case of a gas, that's not the case. So if we were to um, imagine, let's say, um, a few of those, those particles. So let's take this one here and let's take this one over here. There will be no attractive forces between them. In fact, there will be no forces between them until, until they get very, very close to each other during a collision. Now, this also contrasts the behavior of, um, of gases compared to that of, uh, let's say, solids, for example. If, if you have something like a ruler and you move one end of the ruler, well, all the molecules around the point at which you are actually moving are, are moving as well in this organized uh, motion. And this is because the molecules in a solid tends to be tend to be in, a, in an organized lattice, and uh, there's some very strong forces between the individual particles. A gas behaves differently. So if let's say we do something to uh, let's say to this particle over here, then the rest of the particles will not be affected by it. Okay, folks, hopefully you found this, you, this video uh, quite useful. If there are any questions on the kinetic theory of gases and the assumptions that we need to know for the exams, please drop a comment down below and consider subscribing. Thank you very much.